Welcome to the Clubhouse. My name is Alice and I'm so glad that you've joined us. Today we're going to try something a little different than what you may have come to expect from our channel. Instead of a full-on how-to video, this is just a shorty with a few pro tips. Maybe we can call them shorty pro tips. Anywho, the technique I wanted to show you today is super useful in a variety of projects and so I thought I could just quickly show you one of the easiest ways. The easiest ways to what? Well, there are those particular times when you have a cool picture on this thing here and you would like to have it on that thing over there. Whether you need to know the basic shape and size for some kind of spray masking or you want to draw out the whole image on a new substrate, this great little trick will get you there. That's right, good people, we're getting into image transfers. Now to be clear, we're not talking about photo transfers, y'all. That's a completely different and very cool process which deserves its own video, and one day it shall be so, but this right here is a method to get your image from a piece of paper onto another substrate. As a maker, I often need to transfer an image onto an object as the first step in a bigger project. We use this technique to get our image onto, images onto ornaments for wood burning, onto a speedy card for stamp making, to hunks of wood for block printing, even for making stencils. We've been using this simple pencil transfer technique for forever in our workshops. People are always surprised and a little delighted when I show this process as part of a workshop. So I thought I'd share it with y'all. Here's what you're going to need. So materials for our first two methods, you're going to need an image, an item to transfer it to, and a pencil. Simple. For method two, I'm going to show you how to use an iron, and you'll need an image printed with toner. So method one is used when you want the image to be transferred exactly as you see it. Now this is great for wood burning. You're going to print your image on copy paper, and then we're going to rub the back with pencil lead. I'm going to just take one of these little guys. So we're going to rub the back of our copy paper there with pencil. You want to make sure that you're getting that lead on there, well graphite really, that you're getting it on there um, nice and heavy and that you're covering the whole area that your image is in. So I'm going to show that to you in the up close camera. So here's my image. And then on the back, you can see I've laid down a real nice layer of that graphite. I'm going to come at it a little more from this side just to make sure we have enough. Now you're going to put the paper on top of what you want to transfer it to with that graphite side down. So my graphite is going to go on top of my object. Next, I'm going to trace this image with my pencil, stylus, or pen. I really like to use a red ink pen to do this because it makes, this, it makes it really easy to see where I've traced. Now, if your image is really complicated or it's really large, I recommend using a little bit of tape to hold it in place. All right. So I'm using my pen. Once I get a little bit of it done, I'll pull up a corner, careful not to move it, and make sure that it's actually transferring. Looks pretty good. I'm going to do a little more for you. Let's see, let's do the bridge. Now if I have some areas in my drawing that have complicated little details, I might not go over all of those tracing, but I'll come back later and fill them in by hand. Almost done. All right. So here's our piece. 
Ready for that big reveal? Ta-da! So you can see there's a little bit in that bridge, those little close lines together might be a detail I fill in by hand later. But isn't that awesome, y'all? What a great way to transfer. Now our second method is used when you want your image to transfer backwards. Now you might be asking, why would you want to do that? Well, it's especially good for when you're setting up for printmaking. So again, we're going to print our image on copy paper. I'm going to go ahead and cut one out. We're going to do that same image. Now this time, I'm going to trace my image with pencil. And I'm going to be careful to lay down a nice thick amount of pencil. So I'm going over each individual line twice or three times. So I want to make sure I get enough lead, graphite rather, on that image. Now I'm doing this kind of quickly and I always say during workshops the longer you take with this step, the more carefully you trace, the better your final outcome is. I like to say that I'm a lazy tracer and tracing <laughs> shouldn't be lazy when we do it. All right, I'm almost there y'all. Again, I'm just laying that pencil lead along all of those lines. And I'm getting pretty, pretty close to where they actually are. It's a little sloppy. I'll admit that to you now. <laughs> all right, so I've got my whole image has been traced. And I'm gonna lay that down. My whole image has been traced, so you can see. And I'm gonna lay that down on another piece of wood. So we're going to flip that over. So I'm going to flip it over, lay it on the table, and now I'm going to rub the back of this with a pencil. You can also use the edge of a bone folder. And I'm carefully holding it with my fingers to make sure it's not moving around on me. And again, once I'm finished with that, I do like to, while holding it in place, kind of lift up and see where we're at. It looks like I missed some. So I'm going to use this pencil because then I'll be able to actually see that I've rubbed it everywhere that is that has an image on it. All right, y'all ready for that big reveal? Okay, so here we are. We've got our image that has been traced, rubbed with graphite on the back. Now this one, you'll notice it's backwards. So that is great for stamping. It is quite a bit lighter, so you are gonna wanna make sure that you draw those um, pencil lines nice and dark. All right, so again, this is great for block printing um, or anything else where you, you want your image to be backwards. Now, while this method is super quick and needs no special tools, which is my favorite type of trick, the disadvantage is that the transferred image is in pencil lead, which may not hold up to a lot of handling. It can smudge or rub off or maybe not be super dark to begin with. So before you start working with this, you may want to redraw on top of that with some pen or something, some other, um, something else that is more permanent before you start working on it. And also, as I mentioned, sometimes really tiny details um, can get blurred when you're transferring this way. So I will often just trace the large defining areas, leaving those small details to fill in by hand directly on my substrate. Now, as a special bonus for those of you still watching, I have one more way, and this might be my favorite, bestest way to do iron transfers. If you have an iron and a toner printer, you're all set up for great transfers of even the most complicated images. So take note, like the second technique, this method also transfers your image backwards, so it's really great for printmaking. 
Now you have to make sure that the image you're transferring is printed with toner from a laser printer, not ink from an inkjet printer. That ink won't work, at least doing it this way. Now if you don't have a printer that uses toner, you can visit your local copy shop or just stick to methods one and two. All right, so we're gonna take that print. Let me cut out another one of these. We're gonna place this face down on top of our material. And this is some speedy carve, so this is what we use for block printing. And I'm gonna take my iron and hope that it's not too hot. And I'm just gonna iron the back of that image. So again, I placed the, oops, a lot of things in my way here, just a sec. So again, I placed the image down on the speedy carve. So if we look, you're just seeing the back of the paper, the image is on the other side. And we're gonna use our iron. And you might wanna test your iron before you do this to make sure it's not so hot that you're melting your, your substrate, especially with speedy carve, because it's a little rubbery. You don't have to worry so much with wood. All right, so I'm gonna peel up a little bit and see how it's doing. Oh, y'all, it looks great. So again, this works with toner and not with inkjet. Also, you probably don't wanna use your good clothes iron to do this, grab that craft iron. All right, y'all ready for the big reveal? I'm pretty excited. This one turned out great. And ta-da, done with that pesky first step in so many projects. Now we can get on to bigger and better things like cutting that wood block or making that wood burn treasure box with a perfect transfer for reference. Thanks so much for watching this shorty pro tip. And if you have some useful ones for us, please be sure to put them in the comments below. This is Alice signing off from our Summer Avenue Clubhouse. See you soon.